Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Bienvenidos. Today I have my cousin Rosie with me. Some of you guys have seen her like on my Instagram or in my one of my old Sabrina Speaks videos. We did like one years ago. I don't even know if I have it up. I don't know. But anyway, I'm she's back. been on my channel before. <laughs> and she's Ratchet been on my Rosie's Instagram. back. <laughs> Oh no, they have seen you when we With did the, the margaritas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. When they did your meet and greet, they were like, hola prima. Yeah, so, I guess, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so today we're doing a little like girl talk video answering some Sabrina Speaks emails and also a few questions on Instagram. Just talking about, you know, different things, relationships, kids life we're gonna be getting ready while we're doing it we're not gonna talk about the products we're using we're literally just gonna get ready because we're going to brunch right now but what i use i'll put it in the description box i don't know if you want to include what you use. i mean you can you have a little bit you can tell me what you use because i don't know i don't know either okay. this is, <laughs> she could she could she could look could she knows it. yeah so <laughs> um i hope you guys are excited for this video you guys have been wanting me to bring her on here and to do another sabrina speaks so i hope you guys are excited and let's go ahead and get started so we're gonna st it's gonna feel weird because we're gonna just start off the, the bat intro, yeah like it. <laughs> dive right into the cheese man. ways to not have anxiety slash get nervous oh. so easily lord jesus y'all just hit me with <laughs> Right now you have anxiety. <laughs> right now oh my anxiety. If y'all know the morning I was having, you try don't not to, get over it. Wait, try not to bang stuff because the mic's like. Okay. okay. There is no way to get rid of it. I think once you experience it, your body just gets triggered by shit. certain things. Mm -hmm. So what would be like a good way to? Because I don't really get like a lot. Talk of Talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. It sounds dumb, but but no, literally it's not. like like talk to yourself and like try to calm down and like walk away from whatever is giving you the anxiety that's hard to deal with and it's funny because i feel everybody deals with it in their own way yeah or with certain like like you said certain things that trigger it and not everyone my anxiety. damn kids give me anxiety <laughs> and i can't get rid of that life for real how long is too long being with a man and him not proposing yet Li live together and want to have kids. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're better off answering that. There's, I mean, there's, there's no never time a right frame. time. Yeah, no, there's no time frame, but it's like, it's like I've known people that have been together for like a month and then they're engaged and married and they live happily ever after. And yeah. people that wait and it's like, they get married and like a month later they're like, oh, we're getting divorced. Yeah. So exactly. It's honestly you guys and i think that women shouldn't actually how do i say it, live to like For want that. to yeah. yeah 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 i think it just happens exactly i that's how i feel too and the thing is like if you're feeling like you want him to propose and you've been feeling that way or you feel like not even propose but like you're ready for the next chapter in your life and that person isn't talk, talk communicate close because, mouth don't get fed yes because if you don't and you're just sitting there talk or thinking about it or talking to other people saying oh i wish he would do this and that and this and that what if he doesn't feel the same way yeah and, and what if he never will freaking off and you're like literally wasting your time if you live together and you've talked about wanting kids maybe you should ask how he feels about marriage in general if you have already because you can have this whole scenario play out in your head and yep. you're over here thinking about something mm. different i can't concentrate when doing my eyebrows i'm talking i can't do my eyebrows first period no no we've argued about this before oh yeah <laughs> you do your face first i do my face do first eyeshadow. and then do my eyebrows and then i do my eyeshadow no i feel like i'll erase my eyebrows while putting on foundation I feel that. like my eyeshadow will fall on my foundation. Like, the fallout, it would fall and mess up everything I just did. <laughs> I fucking know. How do you feel about your... Mm. No, I don't really want you to finish that sentence. <laughs> How do you feel about your BFF being friends slash hanging out with your ex? Who was that? No, not... Oh, not, not who, was me. That? who was that? Who was that? Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> You're like, who's hanging out with who? <laughs> who's hanging out with who? Let me find out. One of y'all. Right now. <laughs> Call you guys up. <laughs> no, she's just saying in general. That, like, okay, what was the question? That was it. <laughs> got triggered got right me. now. I'm <laughs> your anxiety got triggered. My anxiety got triggered, guys. <laughs> How do you feel about your BFF being friends slash hanging out with your ex? 
or how would you feel? I could kind of relate. I think it all depends on what terms you left. Okay. I mean, we could bring up an example like. Okay, okay. so for example, like w- my cousin. Not like, once not in a while. Just him. randomly. Randomly. Like a hi, how you're doing, and then like holiday type of thing to yes. with her ex. It's like it didn't have anything to do with us. Right. And I mean, I think that he was a part of our lives, everybody's lives, the kids and point. everybody. A, a, a big lot. point, yeah. So it's like, we know, but us as family too, we know our limit. So I'm not going to sit here and have him be my BFF, but it, I'm not going to be like, oh, he was nobody. This yeah. happened, and it is what it is. But I also had it happen to me where, you know, it wasn't a good term, but it's honestly, just don't let it bother you. Yeah. I think that if you live off of that energy, it will consume you and you'll start, and they'll feel that too, and they'll know, and they'll come around for the wrong reasons. Mm hmm. Or they'll, they'll do it purposely because they feel that you, like they're in, that you're intimidated by them being yeah. around. And that's like a good point that she made too, because even though, like she said, my ex might hit her up and say, like, Merry Christmas or something. Um, it's not because I'm already in a different place and I don't, like, I'm already past that relationship. I don't feel a way. Like, it's just kind of like, that's their, their thing and I'm doing mine. First of all, you have to know your friend that's yeah. talking to them and know what their intentions are. Mm-hmm. That's and what then I'm second to say. of all, like, yeah, you have to know your ex and their intentions. Yes. And if it's not anything bad or whatever, I mean. Like, your best friend should know. Yeah. Too, like. Your best wish should not to stay the fuck away from Yeah. Him. Even if there's nothing there. Like, that, I feel like that's just something you don't do. Because I still, I'm still, like, close to, like, some of my exes, like, family. But uh-huh. my relationship is separate from, like, oh, my relationship wasn't based on my ex. My relationship was, like, we're, became close and we're going to continue to be close and that's it. Mm-hmm. I know my limit. Diet tips slash gym tips. Oh, she looking at the wrong one for that. <laughs> you were going to say that. <laughs> I was like, diet has the word diet in it, and I don't want to die. <laughs> you were going to say something like that. I Okay, for me, honestly. No, I was doing good. I didn't even tell you that no. we were on a diet at work, and uh, we were eating nothing but salad. We were literally sacrificing Ooh. ourselves. And we honestly, all of us started feeling better. Yeah, we did. And it's crazy because it was just eating. Like, I wasn't even exercising, like, anything like that. It made a big difference. So that's the tip then because you can pretty much say, like, if you do it with other people, it really helps. It really does. And I'm around, like, I'm at work almost like, all, the all the time. time. Yeah. So we're doing it with them. It's kind of like an encouragement. And we were literally just talking about going back to it because we lasted a month. And then for me... I mean, I've been skinny my whole life. She been Working blessed. out is a plus, though. I'm not, and I've said this before too. I'm not the best when it comes to like what I eat or like dieting. I've never dieted or like, oh, I'm not gonna eat meat or I'm not gonna eat dairy or drink or eat dairy. I've never been able to do that, so I just try to balance it, I guess. But if I'm being really honest, I haven't worked out since like the whole Toby thing happened. That just kind of like, I don't know, I didn't really feel like going to the gym. And it doesn't make sense because you would think, oh, let's go to the gym to take your mind off things. But I just didn't. I haven't been wanting to go. So I told myself I was going to start again next week. So I'll get back to you guys on that because right now, status pending. (laughs) Not like she lying. (laughs) How do you deal with mental stress? What are your ways? What are the ways you use besides pampering? Y'all want me to be real honest with you? I'm going to just say it. It's people always kind of, I don't know, they're very touchy about the subject, but there's been times where honestly smoking, I don't smoke on a daily basis. And you're also not sitting here saying that you have to do it. Yeah, I'm not saying that. She's just saying what she does. This is what I've done. It's helped me with that. I'm not saying no, it's like the solution. And you can keep talking when we get something. um, I don't know, dude. I think going out. I mean, I mean. <laughs> some margaritas wouldn't be bad. <laughs> it's funny because I deal with that, like mental stress, anxiety, all that stuff, but I don't know how to give advice in the sense of like to one, like a person because everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's different. Everybody handles this like in a different way. And it's a different level of stress. Like you don't know what somebody else is stressing about. Yeah. 
but definitely find your own solution like even if you have to like talk to yourself even if you have to walk away from it even the people you surround yourself with but i can't sit here just call you guys like i literally feel like yeah. we're like Talk hey, to each other. what are you guys doing? Let's go have lunch. Let's go do this. Like, don't isolate yourself either. I think that's the worst you can do. Yeah. And I think we've all been in situations where, oh, we don't want to go out. No, no, yes, you are. And let's I, go. Then, yeah, <laughs> I think we have, like, literally, because our group of people that we hang out with, we're all, like, cousins. We're all family. And there's been different points in, like, all of our lives where we're just, like, not having it. Or, like, I don't feel like doing anything because of certain things that might be going on or whatever. But we always find... We don't allow each other to fall in that. Yeah. And I think that makes a big difference. And that, like, for me, I think I've been blessed with, like, a group of people that care, recognize it yeah. and care. And, like, even if it's a fucking text, like, just, like, hey, how are you? Or even if it's, like, a call, like, just something simple. Or let's go have, like, a dinner. And you don't have to necessarily go out and just talk about what's going on. You just go out and you just talk. And you just, it's about something different. Your mind's off of it, and you. I mean, I always come up back feeling better. Yeah, from it. Exactly. You know? And we've literally had to like drive people out the house. And like that would be like a good tip too, is just to check on your people. Even though sometimes it may seem like things are good, going good, like you just never know. Just Do find... something you've never done too. Yeah, también. That's true. Like what? What would you do? I think a lot of my anxiety of like being in crowds and being with people remember we don't like to do anything alone and then it sounds kind of cheesy it sounds kind of i don't know kind of like i don't know i don't know mm -hmm. how to the word for it but i started going to festivals honestly like i used to hate being in crowds i used to hate being alone i used to hate taking initiative i used to hate doing all that stuff even dressing a certain way i yeah. could not like she used I, to never wear like bold lipsticks or dark lipsticks now she like loves wearing dark lipsticks now she can't now she gives me out her green yellow purples yeah <laughs> yeah so it's it's crazy how much one thing can do and it's literally like i told myself i'm gonna do this and i started wearing lipstick at 25 years old sounds dumb but i started wearing lipstick and i remember like, okay this feels good and then from then on to be honest it just didn't stop me and going to festivals help me in the sense of like being in crowds my first time i had a panic attack we had to run out of the crowd yeah <laughs> the second time i kind of cope with it and then i don't know it helped me a lot <laughs> sorry I'm the guy. what are you thinking <laughs> your aztec calendar on your chest I still have it. I got mm. tattooed, but I didn't get as bad as you. Like, you, you can just... legit see the wing. Like, the, <laughs> it looks like an eagle. Um, also, too, like she was saying, to do things by yourself and do things on your own. Actually, my mom the other day. Because um, I've always told my mom, like, you don't have to do things with someone. Like, my mom has always, like, she won't go places by herself unless it's, like, the grocery store. But she would never. So, the other day... I was here at home and it was her day off and she was like, oh, I'm going to go to Denny's. Do you want to come? And I was like, yeah, I'll go if you wait for me to shower. And she was like, no, I'm not going to wait because I take forever. So she went by herself to Denny's and she had her breakfast and everything by herself. And she said that it was such a different experience that she felt at first she felt a little bit like of anxiety. But afterwards, she said it felt really good because she was there. And like she said, just talking to herself mentally and just not worrying about anything else and she said she really liked it so i, I haven't got guys, brave like that yeah, i want to she but... did the other day and she said she was like i really liked it and i always tell people i'm like try it like you just never know my thing is i want to go to the movies one day by myself i will fall asleep <laughs> why <laughs> i don't know what's the best way to face an argument slash fix it with your boo i'm usually the fixer fight him excuse me <laughs> leave him just kidding no, for real. I don't know. I what's, like, your perspective? Because I can answer. I mean, what's your perspective? I mean, looking back, I guess I would say. And it also depends on the level of, like, the fuck up. Yeah. Because if it's something, like... Let's say something small. Let's say it's, like, something small and dumb. I would just talk about it. I'll still be right, though. But I'll talk about it. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm just kidding. No, I think talking about it. Like, you guys are adults. Like, don't... If you guys are pissed at each other, you guys are gonna know you guys are gonna go off, and you guys are petty, and all that stuff, talk about it another day. 
Because mm-hmm. you ain't going to get nowhere. You ain't going to get nowhere. You're going to get more mad. Y'all going to end up breaking up. Yeah, some situations you, like, even though people say you don't want to go to sleep mad, some situations, like, you got to you got to breathe a little bit before yeah. you talk about it because you don't want you also don't want to say something that you know you're going to regret. Mm. So it's kind of like you have to find that middle ground. If you have to be the fixer, then you have to be the fixer. But also on another day when you guys aren't arguing and everything's like fine, you can also talk about how you feel like you always are the one that tries to fix things. Like don't just always do it and expect don't just always do it and then get frustrated because the other person doesn't put in that effort to fix like the problem. a form of, like, manipulation. Like, I'm gonna fuck up because I know you're gonna fix it type yeah, of Yeah, exactly. So that's not good either. Your ex gets back together with his other ex, but we were friends. Disrespectful? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> like this Bye. and like this. <laughs> They're friends with their ex? But we were... F- Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm confused. I'm confusion. <laughs> your ex gets back together with his ex other ex but we were friends who's the friend the ex or the xx or the ex's ex i think like the exes were friends like okay so like let's say it's a guy the two girlfriends one's an ex one's a current so he breaks up with the current one and gets with the ex one but the the girls were friends that's what it seems like the question is that's the other T. I've never heard that. I'm like, in real life. I'm just gonna contour right now. <laughs> I'm just gonna... Uh-uh, yeah, this no. is... At first, you... Okay. <laughs> that's, like, not even disrespectful. That's something that's, like, ew. Like, no. Like, you Ain't don't do that. Is, how are you okay with dating your... Being man's, friends with your man's ex? That's, like... I uh, hear you. You want him? You can have him. No. Uh-uh. And then I'm gonna get him back later. Then I'm gonna get him back later. No. Ew. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I see it as how she's saying that she's friends with her ex-boyfriend and then her ex-boyfriend disses her and goes good gets back with his ex. So yeah. I see it as she still has feelings for her ex because then, I mean, I wouldn't give two shits. Their ex is for a reason. Leave them in the And house. if you truly don't have feelings for him, then... Because let me tell you, I'm cool with my baby daddy and I don't have no feelings when he moves <laughs> on with his life. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, yeah, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, because if they're literally, like, if you have no feelings, and I mean in the sense of, like, like if you're still in love with him, stuff like that, like, I don't care. Yeah. Just keep it respectful. Now I'm going to read some of the emails from my Sabrina Speaks. These are longer and more, like, longer, detailed, and more personal. So this is titled, Am I Breaking Girl Code? Oh, yes, you are. If you ask it, you already are. <laughs> Sorry. It says, hey girl, I just watched your video about reintroducing Sabrina Speak series and I feel it's perfect timing. I've been going through something the last few days and I would like your opinion. So long story short, I was getting to know this guy via social media the last couple weeks and we were finally going to meet up slash hang out. I've had him as a mutual friend for about two years and we have mutual friends as well. Anyways, I noticed that one of my BFFs follows him. So I asked her who he was it turns out that he's someone she used to talk to in high school before i met her keep in mind that them talking was seven to nine years ago and i've only known her for about five years so they were talking before they even knew each other Mm -hmm. they never dated and she's in a happy long-term relationship now she told me she did have really deep feelings for him at one point and she felt some type of way that he even hit me up in the first place Mm. Oh, so the friend had a reaction. Yes. I was a little offended, but let it slide. I thought about cutting him off, but I really do like him, and he was actually worried as to why I stopped replying to him out of the blue. She's mad at me and tweeting some harsh things, but it's okay. I feel like she shouldn't feel some type of way or be mad, especially since she has a whole ass boyfriend she's in love with. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was thinking. That's literally what I was thinking, and she just said it. Again, am I wrong if I hang out with him and possibly date him if I if it gets to that point? Let me know what you think. You want the petty answer? You want the nice answer? <laughs> Both. <laughs> My pettiness would be like, you know what? You got a whole ass man, a whole ass boyfriend, a whole ass another life. What is it to you? But then again, it depends how close you are to this girl. Mm-hmm. If you guys are like, if she comes around like family, if she does all that stuff. But... 
that's a long time. But then it goes back to the whole thing about like, the like girl I see code. both sides. Yeah. Because it's like weird because you guys are friends, but they used to have a thing. And then what if it comes to the point where he comes around and then it's like everyone's around each other. It's kind of like weird. But then again, if it was a long time ago, like years, like some high school shit, like I, I don't know. Because if I was in the situation, I would feel weird, but I wouldn't be like tweeting stuff or letting it. Yeah. Put it on my, on, or put it right here, put it right here. So it doesn't like make noise. Like if she could have expressed to you like, okay, I don't like the fact that, you know, you might be like dating him because of what we had. But she does not have to go out of your way, out of her way to make you feel like shit for doing that because you even took it in consideration in telling her. Yeah. So you're already, you know, okay, being respectful to her and your friendship. So if she's doing that, that's not a real friend, to be honest. Because there's a an adult way of talking about it. And oh, yeah. tweeting and stuff isn't the way to go. Social media, period. No. So I say you tell her like it bothers you this much. It's like I feel that you shouldn't. And you have a boyfriend this and that. And if you need to cut her off your life like that, then do so because at the end of the day, it's your happiness. And if she was a real friend, she would express to you what what she feels and then let you make your own choice, not try to bash yeah, you. Yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't like that laugh. Hi, Sabrina. Love your videos and thanks for doing this new series. My question slash concern is about my boyfriend. We're Leave both, him. <laughs> we're both attending different colleges. He's a two-hour drive away from me, so we're not crazy far away. A few weeks ago, we were on each other's phones for fun, and I see a notification pop up. I let curiosity get the best of me, and I clicked on the message. I see oh. he's been texting this girl from his college name, blank. I won't say the name. Blank, 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 blank. <laughs> he briefly mentioned blank before in a previous conversation a while ago. He only said... They were in the same class together. Anywho, I saw from the messages that they've been meeting up frequently to study or do homework last semester. The thing that bothers me is that he never mentioned these study dates to me not once. Is this a red flag or am I just paranoid? Thanks. Okay, it could be both. <laughs> yeah. But this goes back to uh, communicating. Ask your man. Don't assume. You know your man. His reaction will let you know. And ask in person. Mm-hmm. Not like, over text because then he'll going to have a whole ass different story when he sees you. Yeah. Do it in person so you can see their like true facial expression, their body language, their reaction. And they can tell you like what it is. Yeah. I said, it goes back to I mean, the first time we recorded. We did a video. I said, you know your man. You know his reactions. You know... Yeah. You know when they're lying. You know when they're telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Like, don't go on stalking her. Don't go on. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Don't do that to yourself. Like, you don't want to assume, but you also don't want to, like, be dumb and then let it, like, let him lie if it is, you know, a lie. So... But, like, you also, too, is he, like, going to in groups and she just happens to be part of the group? You get me? Because they have study groups. Yeah. We're trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. We are. <laughs> um, but then I think, the, too... The, the petty me would have popped off. Yeah. Been you in there. would not have been like, oh, I maybe, was not waiting for maybe no. it was a group. You would not have been. Mm-mm. I. But the thing is, I think it's also important for him to tell you, though. Like, Yeah, I think that he should have told you. He should have told you. Like, oh, you know, we're meeting up. For this or that. A lot. All the time. A little too much. That's a little sus. So I recently broke up with my boyfriend and he keeps calling me, texting, calling my mom, my daughter, and my daughter's dad to ask them why I do not want to be with him. What the fuck kind of <laughs> block? Open up a freaking, what is it called? <laughs> a restraining order. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. I have told him repeatedly to stop contacting me and my family members, and he's not listening. I blocked his number, but he's still able to call and leave a message. How do I get through to him that it's over and leave me alone? Girl, take that to the cops, because he does not seem like he's all there. All there. Or, like, even if it's annoying to do, like, try to have your family 
all change their numbers? Would you call the cops though? Like, would you take it to the law? I would, if I did everything I can, like block everything and so did my family, and if he still finds a way, then yeah, because that's already a threat. If he's going making phone calls, even to your baby daddy, your daughter. Yeah, that's weird. Like, that alone is not okay. But that's scary. That is scary. I need a new mascara, Sabrina. There's one right there. Where? Oh, that big ass one? No, it's not. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> let me show. I was like, damn, bitch. I know I'm in need, but fuck. <laughs> she said, don't ask me again. <laughs> And no me pidas nada. Toma. Look, cause Too Faced sent me this package and it looks like a huge mascara, but it's in here. Boom, oh, it's I think like, damn, all right, cool. Whole life supply. I want it in the packaging though. That's cute. Oh, Diana gonna play with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't use mascara because my freaking... Hey there, I love your videos. I know you're around my age 25 and was wondering if you went through a phase in your life where you felt lost. Um, I've always known what I wanted in my life, I've always been very ambitious and always set goals for myself. 24, 25 has been extremely hard for me. I reached a point in my life where I don't know what I want to do, what I want my career to be, and I feel at a standstill. Oh my there's god, like, that sounds exactly like you. Hold on, there's like a... Oh, life is happening right now. Yeah, okay. I felt like I, I feel like I'm at a dead end. I feel so unmotivated and confused. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's my age, but I'm trying really hard to get past it. That sounds did like you, you. Did you go through something like this? Yeah, too, that's when the whole lipstick thing. Yeah. It was when I was 25. Yeah, I know. Because literally, like, I was, like, 24. I, I remember had, that, too. I had my daughter. I ended a relationship with their dad in 2015 before I turned 25. And literally, like, coming out, I felt so lost. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I had a good job. I just didn't know where I was going. Yes. Yeah. And literally, like, it sounds so dumb, but lipstick changed that. <laughs> no, but a lot of people say, like, like little things like that, that make a difference. Hell yeah, it's crazy because I never knew I had that self-confidence in me, and it's crazy. And I yeah. feel like that age, though... 24 25 i'm is, 25 right now yeah you go through so much it's like life is like here yeah it's like that and it's i think it's something that i need to talk about more because well i talk about it here and there but like whenever i just don't feel like doing things i tell you guys like i won't like i won't film or i won't you know get cute or i won't whatever but i think it's something that everybody goes through in their own way but it's funny because it's always around this age it's always around 24 25 26 where you kind of feel like 30 it's okay yeah no <laughs> but kidding. you're saying i'm just kidding you i know i know that was like literally like a turning point like for me and what is it our favorite quote that cat says it's okay not to be okay it's okay to feel like you're not okay and it's okay to cry about it it's okay to yell about it it's okay it's be, okay to feel lost like, yeah like there's a reason why there's a reason why and you don't get it and until it happens and you're like okay this is why this happened no i can't even lie like i have still days where i'm like geez i want to do more like for example like a lot of you guys know i'm still like i'm home here with my parents and that's something that so like, Rita doesn't want. know how to be patient at yes, all. Like, at I all. I don't. I don't. It's a good thing for her to like take initiative to do things to not wait on anybody, but she needs to like, embrace to, what yeah. she has here and there. Pero no, she wants to rush, 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 rush. Yeah. It it sometimes rush. Yeah, but it's also también like I feel like I would do so much more if I was on my own like here i only have this space to work with whereas i think one of the big turning points for my platform was when i had my own place like that time where i was like sharing all my diys and doing all this stuff and that really took a huge turning point it was risky of course because i was living on my own for a while and some sometimes i would be like dude how am i doing this on my own or am i gonna be able to keep doing this on my own and so it's scary, but I feel like that leap or that jump also kind of helped me 
But I also do need to chill sometimes and just be like, she do wait, like wait for the right moment. And also, it doesn't necessarily have to happen at like twenty four, twenty five. Like it could also happen later. Yeah. And you know, I'm glad to say I'm finally like stable and okay and feel good of where I'm going. It's funny because we're total opposite. Like you don't wear eyeliner, you don't wear mascara, you wear like everything. Kind of. Yeah, I don't even know when was the last time I did eyeliner on myself. I can't even remember what you look like with eyeliner. Because my eyes are already small, so if I do eyeliner, it just... My eyes are tiny. But yours are, are wider than mine. Like, up more. I think you should do a look with eyeliner. Maybe I'll try it one day. One day, she said. <laughs> That means no one's Sabrina language, by the way. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> hey, Sabrina, thanks for taking the time out to read this. Love your channel. And just a heads up, my grammar is kind of trash. So I wrote this in traffic <laughs> after work, LOL. I'm currently 26 years old, and I don't think there is any hope for me anymore in the romantic department. Oh, girl. I've always been in a relationship. No, I've always been a relationship girl since I was in high school. My first lasted for five years, 16 to 21. We didn't end up working out, and I met someone a couple days later. And, well, three weeks later, I was in another relationship that lasted three years. I thought this was, I thought the second relationship was it for me. I thought I found the love of my life, but I was so wrong. Long story short, everything that could go bad did, and I was strong enough to leave. The ending of his relationship was so to toxic. I was in therapy for a year after this breakup. We broke up in November of 2016, and I've dated... I've tried to put myself out there, but every time I meet someone, I just don't see myself with any of these guys. I'm not the type to want to sleep around or any of that. I've tried the whole dating app thing, but it's also not for me. I will. I, it will be three years in November of 2019 that I've been single, and I don't know what to do or think anymore. I'm definitely over my ex. I don't want to be with my ex, but I'm ready to be in love again. I don't know why I can't seem to like anyone I date to get to that point. So I'm sorry if this was all over the place, but I've pretty much have been a rela have been a relationship kind of girl to not being in one for almost three years. And it's definitely been life changing for me. And I don't know how to handle this anymore or what to do. Or what my next step is. It kind of sucks to say, but I have accepted that I will be single single for the rest of my life because I'm not the type to force feelings for someone just because I want a relationship. She sounds like me. <laughs> Lord Jesus. But you haven't been single that, that long. I'm not that long, but the whole time frame of like waiting. First off, kudos to you for walking away from a toxic ass relationship. But you have to understand, and I think that a lot of girls hold this too is that we compare guys to our ex and it's, it's in the back of our mind like i say that all the time yeah and it sucks because i actually had to learn that this time around yep because when you fully put a trust and you think that everything's gonna be working just fine and that's the one and and everything just one day to another changes for no reason like you as a woman are like okay well f men f his like f yes. relationships and honestly like the mentality is like that but then at the end of the day just like you are not like any other girl men are not like any other men yes hold on now that you said that this like literally she said i'm gonna bring out the bible let me bring out the, the bible <laughs> cardi richians <laughs> one <laughs> Shut up. Okay, so I'm reading this book, and it, like, literally, I read something that's exactly what, pretty much, like, what you just said. I can't find it. So, like, when she finds it, she's going to post it. Yeah, when I find it, I'll just, I'll just post it. Because it, it, in this book, it says something like, if you feel like you suck at relationships, or all men suck, or all, or I'm never gonna find somebody, or whatever. It's kind of like, it's, it's kind of in the sense of, okay, like, if you're gonna think of, like, that, you're never gonna really, yeah. if you're gonna keep comparing, you're never gonna really find, like, the happiness you want. If you're gonna sit there, just be like, you know what? Let me see. You can keep talking. Oh. You're gonna be like, you know what? Um... They're not the same. I know my worth. Those guys didn't deserve me. I'm going to move on. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to find someone. I'm going to find someone. Exactly. And it's crazy because literally like this past time, I gave myself a year or so. 
And it wasn't because I was timing there because everything. And it literally how things are happening now. I'm kind of tripping out because it's literally been a year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> looking at dates. Like, but. Um, oh, I have like half my hair done. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you just have to know. And you don't have to look. I feel like I've had friends in situations where like they're looking for it. They want it. Yeah. They anticipate it. And it's like you have to also. I mean, you've been from what she's saying she's been single for three years so you know your worth and honestly when you least expect it it'll happen but if you come out with the mentality of like oh like literally a guy goes up to you and he's like good looking and everything and then he talks and you just don't like how he talks or you don't like his shoes or you don't like um something like you're always gonna find something negative like why don't you instead of like oh you know what well he has this he has that versus like something negative i try to put myself in the situation because i'm not somebody that's been single for like a long long time but like i would assume that it's hard to like after you've been single for so long and you want something like how do you not force it but then also be open like to it you just vibe like I've, I've had plenty of trial and errors and it's like you can sit there and be good friends with the person and not want to like have sex with them and not want to like hook up with them like because you just see them as just friends mm-hmm. and then there's people that you just meet and you just hit it off and it just happens yeah I, it's like dating and especially being a single mom dude like that is a fucking words people think that you're easy people think that you just want sex because you, you're desperate you got kids you're single no that's true not the case that's freaking but, hard too I mean this is hard she's she's looking for it and I think that's why she can't find it she wants I to be I can understand a why she yeah like- yeah it's been a while but go out be social if you don't want to do the whole online thing, because online is not bad. I mean, I've seen plenty of people that build relationships off of that. Yeah. But at the same time, if that's not for you, there's plenty of other stuff to do. And it doesn't make you look desperate or anything. You just need to be open. Open-minded. Here, you can read this one since you're chilling. I mean, I was trying to manage my life with my hair, but okay. Hi, Sabrina. I have kept all of my feelings to myself because... I feel that this is not a topic that I should express with anyone outside of my marriage. However, you are keeping me anonymous. You don't know me personally. And I just wonder what the situation looks like on the outside looking in. Ooh, girl, mm. it's going to be some tea. It's going to be some. Yep. I need my glasses on. <laughs> and before they ask you, these are ray Bans. Oh, I know. And their prescription, I am blind. Her, they're similar to the ones I got from Amazon. She copied are me. real ones. She copied me. Mine are real. I am a blind person. <laughs> My husband and I were high school sweethearts. Stayed together through college and got married once we graduated. He has been the only person I have ever been intimate with and my only serious boyfriend. While in college, I wanted to experience college life and date other guys, but I could never just rip the band aside Oh, rip the band-aid off and break up with him because he's so sweet. She want to have her <laughs> whole his life chapter. <laughs> Ain't wrong with that? I never felt like I had a good enough reason to do that. In that time of wanting to break up, I got pregnant with our daughter. Once I became pregnant at 23, my husband felt that it was only right for us to get married. Ooh. And at the time, I felt Sheesh. the same way. I pushed aside wanting to date other people because at that point my wants slash needs didn't matter because I had to put my daughter first. We have not been married for two years and I am just not happy. I love my husband as my daughter's father, but I don't know if love him as my hus- if I love him as my husband, if that makes sense. He is an amazing provider, an amazing person in general, but I just don't feel happy like I feel I should. We go on dates without our daughter, vacations, even and try to spend time with each other but i feel i force myself to feel something for that for him that i don't Ooh, Ooh. i constantly think about what would have happened if i could have just uh, if i could have have just broken up with him in college before getting pregnant i put everyone's feelings before my own and i know i am living with the decision i made i just feel stuck from your perspective if you were in my shoes what would you do or how would you handle this well you're lying to yourself you're lying to you're lying to yourself and you're trying to paint the picture trying to force it this goes back to the first sabrina speaks we'd said where i said you could love a person 
but there's two different things you can be in love with the person or you can just love a person for who they who they who are they are and that i think a lot of women get it confused they get used to being around somebody and they love them but they're not in love with them and they just mind fuck the shit out of themselves yeah and if you're not happy don't stay together for your child that's just gonna teach her that that's what she needs to do in life and that's not right yeah. Um, I can guarantee you as she gets older she'll understand and honestly if you're going to sit back and look at what everybody else thinks then you're never going to be happy because as the kids get older they're going to see more they're going to see more they're going to know and time's going to go go on like that's like it's almost like time wasted like where you can be finding yourself or like just I mean it, it's tough because you're you're married like you're full on married and you have been for like a long time you have kids and everything so i can see why it would be something that you're like uh i don't know if i want to do this but you only as she's cheesy cliche you literally only live one time like why are you gonna live in misery if you're not happy and just say you're gonna be the bad guy and i know that you're saying he's such a sweetheart and all that stuff but if he's if you're not in love you're honestly wait you're wasting both your time but how okay but how would you like what do you do like what's the next i mean i mean i walked away i mean obviously my situation i had a reason to but let's say like if i didn't have a reason i just wanted to walk away like i honestly just communicated I just said, you know, this and that. Yeah, they're going to hate you. Everything's going to go to, like, shit. And he's probably going to just be at his worst or whatever. But at least you were honest. And you could not go after somebody for not lying to you. Because later on, you I mean, you can only put up a friend so much. Yeah. And I feel like he, sh- even if it's hard, I feel like he should still, hopefully he doesn't take it to where he's going to hate you because... You're kind of... Who wants to be with somebody who isn't genuinely there? Like, yep. all there. And even me, like, I don't have kids, but I was, like, engaged, as you guys know. So, it, I even went through that phase, too, where I was like, what is the family going to think? What are they going to say? People are going to have certain thoughts because I was, like... I called off an engagement or a marriage or a wedding or whatever. But now that I've done it, it no one is judging me no one is telling me like you shouldn't have done that or why did you do this nobody not even my grandma my grandma's old school my grandma hasn't told me nothing how could someone be mad at you for being like i mean not be mad at you but like they can't hate you forever for being honest you're doing them a favor yeah you're doing yourself a bigger favor and only that your child's future that she's not going to live thinking like okay mom and dad like, mom doesn't look happy. Mom acts a certain way. And it's going to get to a point where you're probably not even going to want to sleep in the same room. You're just mm-hmm. going to be distant. And I know couples that are older, like, yeah, older of age, that just live together because they're playing the part for their kids. And, and I don't get that. I don't. I don't. I think... And that, that goes back to that's what they were taught. And they don't yes. know any better. And it's like, with... Or maybe they do know better, but they're scared. Like... I I just don't I just don't maybe because we've both been in situations where we've been able to leave and like have that sense of independence and just like I mean I don't know what the fuck was gonna happen but I just exactly. said <laughs> I'm not gonna stay here and yeah. find out yeah like it wasn't getting any better my then five year old son um was able to call it and talk back to me and his dad and just call us out on our bs so if my five-year-old was able to call it i think that it was like the red flag okay this isn't working out yeah so and and now it the kids co-parenting like i said is another ordeal but the kids are happy they're mental and you can't sit here and say you regretted it i don't so i mean so no offense like talking shit but you know, it's just, I don't regret it. I'm glad, where I'm happy where I'm at. The kids are happy. They have their dad involved in their life. And that's it. Like, it takes time and you're going to go through it, like, big time. Yes. It doesn't happen overnight. It might not even happen over a year. But it will happen and you'll look back and be like, thank God. Like, yeah. thank God. <laughs> okay, so that's it for today's Sabrina Speaks slash get ready with me i did post like my little story thing kind of like last minute but if you guys 
ever want to send in your questions or your scenarios, like I always say, you can leave it at my Sabrina Speak series email. I'll have it down below. I have two separate emails. Make sure to send it to the Sabrina Speak series at gmail.com. And I always put little question polls on my Instagram whenever I'm doing a Q&A. So you can all also follow me on there just so you don't miss those. Um, we probably will do more girl talk videos because this one was a little bit more generic and more general. Um, if you guys want certain topics though, like if you want us to come on here talking about like, I don't know, like periods or like birth control or birth, that's what I mean. Like periods, birth control, pregnancy, like whatever girl topics, things that are so taboo that people don't like talking about. If you guys want us to do those, you can always let us know as well. And we can do a mukbang. That's what we were going to do today, but it's a little early to do a mukbang and we're going to go eat. So yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video with my cousin. And if you guys um, enjoyed, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I was just, I was just like, you're like, okay. I was Thank just you. like, the whole is still life. I was just kidding. Just kidding. Moral of the story. Just kidding. Oh my god. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I love y'all. Let's get on with y'all. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Literally, shit. I just don't do my hair, period. <laughs> we'll do like the intro at the end when we're all done up. So we don't have to start the video looking like this. Okay. You get me? Okay. You get me? <laughs> yes, I get you. I don't um, know what we're talking about yet. I need a michelada. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do need a shot. I need a bottle of tequila already. I mean, we could. Yeah, but it's too early. For okay, drinks. mom. For like the shots. Who said it was too early? It's five o'clock somewhere. Hi and bye. <laughs> this is why you don't have a channel. This is why. <laughs> I just sit back and sip my you tea. Just, yeah, you just sip tea. Tea. We're done. Even though no you didn't bring here. me my Starbucks. You forgot. You me. didn't say two. I want to know where it says two. I'm... <laughs> where? Look, hold on, hold on. Venti ice cream latte with soy milk, two pumps of vanilla, and a grande. There's two different, venti and a grande. Oh. <laughs> I read it as one. <laughs> Whatever. You didn't need those calories anyway. <laughs> Whatever. I'll buy you a margarita. Where are we going? I don't know.